I hear older people say it take a village to raise a child. That's one of my favorite things about Bartram is that I've never seen a school have such a tight knit community wrapped around it. I think people just look at it from the outside and what happens. Come inside the school and see what it's really like in here. This is me acting. I'm not a good actor. This is me acting for the camera. My name is Rich. And now Sade is cinematographer and Honesty is director. Alexis is filming the film. Seven's on sound. I'm filming us filming the film and Alexis filming the film of the film. Uh, do I just keep talking? Okay. Can you count so we can uh, check this out? One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. One last thing I promise that when we are doing a real interview, it's really important that we're all not drawing attention away from, like, the person, you know, we're doing anything to draw attention away. Um, one thing that will help with that is having the production team set up before the person gets in there so they're not like watching all these things happen. And they said like they feel comfortable where it was. Mm -hmm. exactly. Seven, help to Miles set it up since you're. Hold the boom pole for me. Can you, you scoot to your right, please? Hold on. As I said, our team's going to make a film about an issue we care about. And do you have any ideas for what you want to make a film about, and what are your ideas? I really do think Bartram has grown over the years. I like I like the school. It's not, it's not, I don't think it's bad at all. It's actually pretty funny sometimes. Seven! Hello. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to add after doing that for your first time? I thought I was going to pee my pants. You know, you know. <laughs> it's so, you just, so it's okay if I'm doing this on purpose to get this effect. Sometimes people do that. But like, take note that you can't see. One thing I just want to ask This one right here. Your child is opening is it. Sean and the one behind you. I had to go with my eyes, so. Come on, come on. We're going to do that. Hey, Elijah, what is your name? <laughs> you said my name already. AKA Big Eight. Breathe hot. Breathe hot. Breathe hot. Are you supposed to finish it? I, I care about the teachers because the teachers care. They, they give the compassion like back to us. You know what I mean? Like teachers, they show the love and stuff. So I love the teachers and care about the teachers in here. I'm just popping back up there. This is Mr. Lovey Lovey of the community. This is the heart of the community right here. As you can see. I think we should make a film about how our school is not how it's made out to be. Like our school is made out to be like one of, is one of the worst schools in Southwest Philadelphia, which is not. There's a lot of good things that goes on in Bartram. It's ours. Yeah, we can record that. You go to YouTube right now, you search up Bartram, you probably won't even get no good things. You'll probably just see a bunch of fights. That's all you'll see. Scrolling down, I've seen it for myself. You, you search up Bertram on YouTube, it's just a bunch of fights. Like, but what they're not doing, I feel as though, they're not putting the good stuff on the internet, the stuff that needs to be on the internet. They look at that one incident instead of looking at everything else. That's like going wrong in the school, but like, oh, these kids, it's just out of control. And they really not. It's just, you know, like, just everybody had that one kid that, that messes up and like, you know, ex, my ex dad is in every school. Everybody right. makes mistakes. Right. I just feel as though this school, it's not, it's not horrible, but if people would stop like doing dumb, is it okay to curse? Yes. Stop doing dumb ass things, maybe. <laughs> 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 
But is it just people doing dumbass things, or is it people doing like, or is it the the what are the systemic things? And from all of your interviews, you listen to them, right? And the theme that most people were interested in one was Bartram's not as bad as it, people think, gets a bad rap. The other one was, well, there are some issues, but they're not necessarily issues that people here cause. They're not right. They're like more systemic things. So one thing that we wanted to focus on today are like, well, what are those things that are affecting Bartram and making some of these challenges that then people at Bartram kind of get the bad rap for, right? All right, find the good shots. That United States of America thing, I want so that. No, I didn't. All right, Mr. Lafferty, from can you count to five for me, please? Five. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Count to five. Backwards or forwards? It doesn't matter. One, two, three. Thank Seems like sometimes Bartram gets a bad reputation. Why do you think that is? Bartram gets a bad reputation because of things that happened in the past. Um, when I first joined, and Bartram always, even when I came to Bartram, I got looks from people that know nothing about Bartram. Uh, you get this look like, and it's like, wait, you, you don't know anything about Bartram. You've never been to Southwest Philadelphia. You don't understand uh, some of the, the challenges at Bartram. We're going to get one of them little things going like, action. We have one. Oh, you do? You want it? Boom. Action. <laughs> so cool. Film groom interview. Blooper. You all right? Mm-hmm. My name is Demario Massey, part of the UPenn Film Group. Recently, we had did some research on Bartram, and from like years, probably like 2000 maybe until now, yeah, Bartram has always got a bad reputation. Do you know why Bartram has a bad reputation? Well, yes, um, in all honesty, because that's the way the news media points. Bartram is on the news often because they want to sensationalize the negative. What you see in the media is unfortunate, but I think it's just that. I think it's uh, a lot of smoke and mirrors. Are there bad things that happen here? Sure. But there's a lot of great things that happen here as well. And I don't think that that's, you know, a Bartram High School thing. I think that's an urban community thing, that we see one picture painted. You know, we don't get to see the rest. For people who may only know about the bad parts of Bartram's reputation, what would you like them to see, know, or understand about Bartram? Um, I just think they need to, first I would love for them to come in. Um, just come in and see it for yourself, because perception isn't reality. And what they need to understand is that the school has had a lot of different people in here. I think, what, four or five principals in the last, the last three years? Um, I fell in love with Bartram first when they won the city championship back in 1976. So that's probably about 41 years now, I guess. Um, so I'm a Bartram lifer, so to speak. Do you think that if, if people could see the way that kids walk in these hallways, and put it in our shoes, you think they would feel the way that we feel like when they say that Bartram is a bad school? I want them to come in and see for themselves. You know, we still have some areas to improve in, um, but I definitely want those students and their parents to start coming to our building and see the great work we're doing right now at the new John Bartram High School. Brings with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoice in rise high as the listening skies. Let every sound loud as the roll of Please come in and have a seat. Hopefully moving forward, we have several other events planned. We've turned the climate around, we've done some different things. We're still a work in progress. Because as you know, over the past several years, my alma mater, which I love, went through some challenges. But now, we're coming out of those challenges. 
So clap it up for that. That's big. That's amazing. Okay. Now that number five. Woo! Come on. Miss Barton. We call this the, the Mama Barton. I'm going to give it all to her. That's, that's Barton's mom right there. John Bartram High School was one of 20 schools selected to compete in the Aspen Challenge. And I am working with these wonderful young people here. I'm going to let them explain it. So we came up with the name The Seeds of Change because we would like to make a change, but like we start little and then we go big. So it's basically Seeds of Change. When you look at Southwest, there's a lot of trash and stuff. So that really got our attention. Like, how about we try to clean it up more and like show people different ways on how you can reuse your trash instead of throwing it out. But you don't have, is it like a square we or a circle were, to go in the middle? Yeah, we're supposed to find a square or circle to go in the middle. I was thinking about doing and that. How about you just do like, this little circle? That's one of my favorite things about Bartram is that I've never seen a school have such a tight-knit community wrapped around it. That, you know, we have a really rich alumni and community members who come and who are really invested. I mean, it's the only comprehensive high school in Southwest Philadelphia. So it not thriving, you know, would be to the detriment of the whole community. And I think people understand that. And so they come back and they give input and they share and they try to build and figure out what we can do to make Bartram better. And that's, that's by far one of my favorite things about the school. I would say like a walkthrough of how the students get to school and what they have to go through, you know, coming yeah. into school. <laughs> okay, and then we get to Bartram. Mayo yeah. said if we end this part with like the reputation question, mm -hmm. this question is kind of like, I, we can almost structure it the way we had that conversation, right? Like the why does Bartram have this reputation? And like some people say it might be the students, but like that leaves some stuff out of the picture that's really important to understand. Like. You're, we're fighting this argument all the time and this perception. And it's not just Bartram. As you said, it's South Philly. It's Gratz. It's this. this and, and again, we're all trying to, to win over hearts and minds that says we need equ equitable funding. I never really like knew how much this school like naturally had, but we do a lot of fundraisers, so we do raise some money. I just feel like we could use some more money because we need more books and we need better desks because these desks is horrible. I think it's kind of jacked up, for real, because it's a lot of schools with with textbooks that's way like that's back in like 1970 or 1980 or something like that and they all falling apart, they old. It's just, it's hard to focus seeing like the school that you love falling apart. And it's, and it's like, you, you see that it's falling apart and you see that the teachers are starting to get tired and you know, like starting to get, you know, fed up. Like it's, like it's hard to see teachers that you love starting to get tired and fall apart and like you can't focus on, you know, the stuff that's important. Everybody's attention up here. I can't look up. What you're making, monomer to powder. Our kids are out there. They're doing what they can do under crazy situations. And they're the kids that we keep fighting for. The students and the staff struggle and make things work with what we have. I, I've, I've heard that blame game a lot. You know, I think that we're all guilty of it. I, I'll start by saying that. I think that educators are guilty of blaming the families. And, you know, uh, for not investing enough time in their children at home. I think families are guilty of blaming classroom teachers for not taking the time out and giving, equipping, equipping the students with enough tools for them to be successful. You know, as educators, we do it, we blame the district. You know, 
There's not enough funds. If they gave us more money, we'd be able to do all of this. And they say, if you did more work, we could give you more money. People aren't ready to own their piece. Like, I'm going to own my piece. I'm going to own my piece, my responsibility for these kids while I'm here every day. You know, if like all these people coming together, if they don't take it and say, this is what I need to do to make this better, it won't get better and they won't change because we're literally doing the same thing, expecting a different result. This film could make it better. Um, this film could go left or it could go right. So like certain people could pay attention, certain people won't pay attention to it. But we should still do it because like certain like basically all you need for real for real is one person that will pass it on. So once one person watched the film film and they really get to them, that will pass it on and then hopefully this film really be like important and it goes big. Instead of saying bad stuff about Bertram, hopefully the film changed people's mindsets about it. Okay. Come on, bring it. Hey. 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 Hey.